This is section 4, 5, part B, graphing other trigonometric functions. Cosecant and secant are reciprocals of sine and cosine. So cosecant has vertical asymptotes when the sine equals zero, and secant has vertical asymptotes when cosine equals zero. So if we look at the graph on the left, that dotted graph in blue is the sine function. Any times the sine function touches the x-axis or crosses the x-axis, you will have a vertical asymptote for the cosecant function. When you have a high point or a low point of the sine graph, you will start there for the cosecant and you will go the opposite direction. So when you get to a high point, you'll take it higher. When you get to a low point, you will take it lower. Same thing can be done for the cosine. So if you know what the cosine graph looks like, anywhere that it crosses the x-axis, you will have a vertical asymptote. You can find your low and your high points. When you find a high point, you'll take it higher. When you find a low point, you will take it lower. Because of this, there are two different ways to graph these functions. You can use the rules for cosecant and secant, or you can use the rules you already know about sine and cosine, graph those points first, and then just graph your secant and cosecant functions off of those points. So this is what a cosecant and a secant graph looks like by itself without the points of sine on it or cosine on it. So if you want to use the rules of just cosecant and secant, you can find your vertical asymptotes by doing bx plus c is equal to negative pi over 2 and bx plus c equals pi. Sorry, the first one is just negative pi and pi for cosecant, and for secant, you would use bx plus c equals negative pi over 2 and bx plus c equals 3 pi over 2. Graph your vertical asymptotes, then find your high and low points, and then graph it. We also are going to still have that same phase shift of negative c over the absolute value of b. Or the other way you could do this is just to graph sine or cosine, whichever one you're looking for, and then just graph the points from there. This is the method that I'm going to be showing you today. So if we need to graph cosecant of x plus pi over 2, I am first going to graph y is equal to the sine of x plus pi over 2. Now remember from our rules from graphing sine, our a value is 1, our b value is 1, and our c value is pi over 2. This means my amplitude, which is your a value, is 1. We need to find our period. Remember period is 2 pi over the absolute value of b. And our b value is 1, so this is just 2 pi. We need to find our interval. And the interval is just period over 4. So since our t period is 2 pi, 2 pi over 4 will just simplify to be pi over 2. And we need to find our phase shift, which is just negative c over the absolute value of b, or negative pi over 2 all over 1, which will just be negative pi over 2. So since our interval and our phase shift both have a pi over 2, we can just make that our scale. Now remember, sine normally starts at 0, 0, and then it will go to its high point or its low point. But because we have a phase shift, instead of starting at 0, 0, we're going to start at negative pi over 2, 0. Now our interval tells us every pi over 2 we're going to change where we are. So the first pi over 2, we're going to go to a high point. Next pi over 2, we're going to go back to the middle. 
Next pi over two, we're at low, middle, high, middle, low, middle. Since we're at the middle, we'll go low, middle, high, middle, low. Now this is where we're gonna stop graphing sine and we're gonna switch and start graphing cosecant instead. Now cosecant, anytime you cross that x-axis or you have a dot on the x-axis, that is where you are going to put your vertical asymptotes. So by using these rules, it lets you not have to memorize as much. As long as you know the rules for sine and cosine, you can just take those rules to use for cosecant and secant. Now, when you find a low point, you're then gonna take it and just take your point lower. And any high point, you're just gonna take it and take it higher. And this would be our graph of cosecant of x plus pi over 2. Remember, if you don't want to use the laws of sine or the rules for graphing sine, you could have instead set bx plus c equal to negative pi and bx plus c equal to pi, solve for your x values. Those would have told you where two of your vertical asymptotes were. Then you would just had to find all the other vertical asymptotes off of that. You would have had to remember to go to your amplitude height to make your first point and the low points and figure out where those were and then graph up and down from there. But if you like to use these rules of sign, it does make it a little bit easier to understand what is actually happening. Let's locate the vertical asymptotes and graph the sketch of y equals secant of x over 4. First, I'm going to start with y is equal to the cosine of x over four, or we can write that as one fourth x. So in this case, our a value is one, b is one fourth, and c is equal to zero. So we do know our amplitude, which is your a value is one. We know our period, which is two pi over the absolute value of b, is two pi over one fourth which we can write as two pi over one times. Remember when you have a fraction over a fraction, you flip the second and you multiply. So this is gonna give us eight pi over one or just eight pi. Our interval is your period over four, which in this case is eight pi over four or two pi. And our phase shift is negative c over the absolute value of b, or negative 0 over 1 fourth, which will just be 0. So if this has 2 pi in it, let's just make each of these pi. Now, we know that cosine starts at 0, 1. We know it starts at its high point. There is no phase shift, so we will start this at its high point. And we know because of its interval, it's going to change every 2 pi. So 2 pi away, it'll be at the middle. 2 pi away will be low. 2 pi away back to middle. So 2 pi away middle, 2 pi away low, 2 pi away middle. Now, this is where we're gonna switch and start graphing secant instead of cosine. Remember, anytime it crosses or touches that x-axis, that's where you're going to have your vertical asymptotes. Anytime you have a low point, you're gonna take it and make your graph go lower, getting close to those asymptotes without ever actually touching them. 
anytime you have a high point, you're going to take your high point and take it higher. Again, getting close to those asymptotes without ever actually touching the asymptote itself. So this will be the graph of y equals secant of x over 4 or y equals the secant of 1 4th x.